this another chronicle, or is it still part of the story? How is it that I haven't died yet? Ladies and gentlemen, it is definitely a great day to be here. Not just because of the fact that we've been having excellent weather, things seem to be getting way better. When it comes to movies, they listen. Did you see two movies that have previously come out that were done by the exact same writer and director? The first one, mediocre with some good ideas. The second, massive improvement in certain areas, but focusing too much on one thing. The third, well you're about to be pleasantly surprised as we continue on the story of Riddick. Directed by David Taha. Ho, David Toey, starring Vin Diesel, Katie Sackhoff, Dave Bautista, and Matthew Nabel. Five years after the dramatic climax of the previous installment, Riddick is left for dead on an alien planet, alone, betrayed, and backstabbed. Being attacked by every single hostile force known to man, which soon becomes worse when a group of assassins move in to take the bounty on his head. But it isn't them he should be worried about. Is this third installment playing off what made it so good in the first place? Or is it just a tired franchise that needs to die. Let's find out. Kick it into the good. Now I know I say this quite a lot. Vin Diesel grabs your attention right at the start. Literally. Stepping back into the boots as Riddick. The outlaw prison escape artist scumbag smoother than a blade slicing through skin. It gives a good summary of exactly what had happened, where it had led to, and how he actually got into this predicament. Using flashbacks to explain what happened. Even relating back all the way to Pitch Black. This is no spin-off. This is the story that we want to see. It is great to see Carl Urban back in his commander boots, just as a small cameo. Even seeing Dave Bautista and Katie Sackhoff. What is this, an epic sci-fi convention? And Nolan and Gerald Funk. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon? Yeah, that guy. Apparently, he does better movies. And strangely, Jordi Mola. Well, you don't know who that is? Let me just refresh your memory. <sighs> Fucking bitches. I'm starting to notice how many ways this trilogy relates to the Bad Boys trilogy. This installment took a way more adult approach, paid off and worked perfectly. One point that I didn't raise in the previous installment, rated PG-13. There wasn't much violence, there wasn't much blood, and it managed to play off a good action sequence without needing to go extreme lengths. This is Riddick, a foul-mouthed, smooth-talking, wise-cracking, bone-snapping killing machine. It deserves to have an R rating. It makes it so much more enjoyable. He still has a good nature to him. We see him care for a dog throughout the movie. Sci-fi version of Call of the Wild. And he's a very good boy. Mm. Okay now. Oh. The CGI looks incredible. It takes from what made the early 2000s less than subpar budget CGI to bring it to what it is today. And since this came out in 2013, still looks pretty damn good for its time. Even with Riddick's eyes, they actually look real. Now given the fact that back in the previous films, partly CGI and mostly contact lenses in order to get away with it. You'd swear that Vin Diesel had to stay in the dark for 20 years in order to achieve this look, which I honestly wouldn't put Past it. And we find out what the purpose of his goggles are. The one question I had going all the way back to the first one. The look and feel of this has skyrocketed, and yet the budget is less than what we've seen in the previous movie. Giving us a better look, has a much more darker tone, takes the tense moments from Pitch Black, ramps those up to 11, action from Chronicles, to fully form this fleshed out masterpiece that's worthy of all fans and newcomers. Massive overhaul of the colors. Sticks to one. They might have fixed this in the previous, they perfected it in this one. A Mad Max style film that came out before Mad Max 4 was perfected. It is shot beautifully. The cinematography applauded for what it is. Backgrounds that leave you in awe. Moments that you want to capture, stored in your mind forever. And the action, though there is a bit less, is still very well paced. But it is as good as it gets. Violent, bloody, shot beautifully, with perfectly timed slow-mos given, and all of the fight choreography you could want. It makes these moments more and more memorable. As good as it is to stay out in the sun, you can get burnt. <laughs> Once again, the story jumps the gun 
Wait a minute, no it doesn't. They actually explain all that in the flashback. You never explained fully what was going on in the story. Now I have a clear understanding of what it is. But one thing I will not forgive you for, using the same stupid Merc tough guy cliche. The main antagonists are your typical run and gun, foul mouth, sick degenerate, Spanish talking bozos that take away from a compelling script and bring it down to this mediocre tough jock mentality. Dumbs with guns. The mercs in the previous film were way smarter than this. They got less screen time and were caught twice. Two times. Two times. And it just doesn't fit the tone having this guy put into this sort of movie. Sort of ruined the antagonist's perspective. I mean, who had this fucking idea? He tries tossing in this whole faith subplot, more so in pitch black. While it was very apparent in the first, the second was less, this one even more. There were only two references of God or faith or any of the like. If you really want to include that sort of subplot, honestly, it seems like David Toei really wanted to, and he should have stuck with that and just put in a little bit more effort. As animalistic and survival heavy as it is, it's what makes Riddick the man that we were introduced to. The will of a hunter, the primitive side, the animal side. Riddick is top notch when it comes to this franchise. Might have a few bad moments, but this certainly doesn't fault it from being what it is. A perfectly paced action powerhouse, subtle with how it does things, but full on when it comes to the performance. So that's why Riddick gets. Now, I always like to end my reviews with a quote from the film. And my favorite quote was, Forget the start, it's the end you want to think about now. You know it when you see it. But that being said, did you see it? Will you see it? And if so, let me know in the comments. Until then, I've been DJ. And always remember, did you see it? Well, a good end to a trilogy. There's a fourth one? Looks like it's time to big fuck me. Looks like it's time to get back in the fight. Riddick will return in the area and Chronicles end.